I'll call the City Council Joint Work Session with the Native Village of Eoc Tribal Council of April 9th, 2020 at 3 p.m. here in Cordova Center to order. And if I could have a roll call of the Native Village of Eoc, uh, Chairman Olson, if you're online, I might have you start with that roll call, please. There's still people calling in, so we'll give a sec. I want to make sure uh, Chairman Olson's on. And please remember to mute your cell phones when you're not talking. Do we have Chairman Olson uh, dialed in yet? Yeah. Oh, hello, Daryl. Uh, so. Maybe I'll go through some of the ground rules that you and I discussed now before we get started. So what we'd like to do uh, during this joint work session is if city, we'll just maintain our own organization structures in that uh, Daryl will chair for the Native Village of EX Tribal Council and I will chair for the uh, city council and that way we can facilitate um, you two leadership groups conversation. And so you could direct a question uh, through me to the um, tribal council and the tribal council can direct questions through me to or through Daryl to um, city council. And that'll just help us keep the conversation organized and hopefully keep us from stepping on each other and so forth during the telephone call. So just a couple of rules that help. Uh, give a brief pause uh, before you start talking and after you stop talking so it gives a chance for Daryl and I to jump, step in and help facilitate. So Daryl, uh, did you have anything to add? No, I do not at this time, but um, I, I personally am on my cell phone and I can't see who's all present. So if we could have everybody announce who's present. You know, that's, that's a good segue. If you want to call the uh, role for the tribal council, then I'll call the role for city council, and then we'll see if anybody else is online. Okay, thank you. Jack Hopkins? Present. Raven Cunningham? Present. Pam Smith? Present. Tom Anderson? I'm here. And Daryl Olson present. We have a full council quorum. Okay, thank you, Daryl. And now, uh, Susan, if I could have you call the roll for city council. Sure. Um, Mayor Copeland. Here. Tom Baylor. Here. Kathy Sherman. Here. Jeff Gard. Here. Melina Meyer. Here. Ann Schaefer. Here. Here. David Allison. Here. And David Glason. I'm here. That's a quorum of council as well. Okay, and I know that there are some medical staff and support staff from the native village of EAC online. If you could just um, take turns stating your name and your role, uh, that would be helpful. Uh, I'm sorry, Trey. Uh, health director. I'm sorry, Trey. Uh, Chambers. Hmm. Carrie Collins was one. I think I heard Carrie Collins. Actually, yes. uh, let me do it this way. Uh, Bert, are you online? Yes, I am. I think you know who's there on your team. Can you just call their names one at a time and have them give a yes? Carrie Collins? Yep. Health, she's health director for Ori Lanka. Um, Tanner. Our legal counsel with Sanofsky. Present. And that's all we have on the call. Uh, Rena, uh, Rena Newer, she's on as well. Present. Okay, and then you, Bert, are the executive director. And then do you have legal counsel online? Tanner, yes. Oh, Pam, okay. Tanner. Tanner. Tanner, Tanner. great, thank you. Okay, and who else do we have online? Blake? I don't know who. We shouldn't have anybody. Blake? 
Yes. This is uh, Dr. Blackader. I'm online uh, representing uh, Hana today. Okay, great. Thank you, Sam. And did I hear Holly on there? Do we need Holly? Hello, Brandon. I don't know who that is. I still didn't catch that name. Heather oh, Heather. Heather. Heather, Heather. Got, gotcha, Heather. Thank you. Is there anybody else online? Okay, here in the room with me is, is Susan Bourgeois, the city clerk, uh, Helen Howarth, the city manager. We have the uh, emergency incident commander, Paul Trumbly, and we have Aaron Muma, the uh, operations manager for the incident management team, and then Susie, Susie um, Hirschlib. And what's your role, Susie? the resource unit leader for the incident management team. So I wanted you to know that, uh, especially city council, in case you have any questions during the dis this discussion. And do you, do we know if Corey can be available? Maybe. He might just text. And I'm just having Susan uh, check to see if um, Holly can make herself available for the call in case council has any questions. So uh, with that, our work session topic is ideas for working together and sharing resources during the 2020 COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, the idea is that um, it's just an open discussion between the tribal council and the city council with resource staff around you to uh, facilitate the conversation in any direction you give us. So with that, uh, I'll, I guess I could start with any, uh, I guess the one question, um, that the native village of EAC had posed. Uh, I will let Daryl uh, start if you could, Daryl. Um. Yes, thank you, Mayor Copeland. We did have a couple questions and I'll just pose the questions and then, and then go from there. One of the first questions we wanted to ask is, will, would the city council be willing to have a unified command where we have the representative from the native village of EAC on the present, the present, you know, the, um, the incident command center. And that's one of the questions we had. The second question we had is um, we would like to have more community. We would like to have more meetings with the city council so that we have a unified front with the two bodies. We realize the city council is the body for the city of Cordova, and we are the body for the native community. So we would like to have more meetings between both of us so we can have discussion and come to an agreement and then get that out to the community. And the last one we did have was uh, what resources did the city have in mind for us to assist the city? Those are the three questions at this time. Okay, thank you, Daryl. And um, so I wrote those questions down uh, for city council. And um, the first one involves unified command and there's two different structures I think that a incident response can take and there's various merits to either one. And uh, I don't know that city council is in a position to answer that yet. Um, we could, um, I guess, have a briefing on that or help explain that to city council in the ups and downs at a, at a future meeting or you could, we could ask incident commander here to give us just a real, uh, you know, nickel view um, and I would ask, what's the will of the city council? Yes, lady. Allison. Yes, uh, Councilman Allison. Yeah, I don't have any problem uh, figuring out a way to to make uh, NVE part of the or the village part of the uh, incident command. Uh, however, that works, having a seat on there or or being part of it, but whatever, whatever we can work out, I, I certainly don't have any problem um, including them in, in the process at all. Uh, I think it's good. Okay. That sounds like it starts to lean. Uh, yes. Is that Councilman Baylor? Uh, 
Councilman Gleason. Uh, Councilman Gleason. Yeah, I think the same. I just add uh, on to Dave's comment. I believe the same thing, and and I, you know, this is Cordova we're talking about, and uh, uh, NV is a big part of Cordova, and definitely deserve um, a seat in there. Um, that's my opinion. Okay, uh, Council. Uh, Mr. Mayor, this is Councilman Schaefer. Councilman Schaefer. Um, yeah, I also am in support of um, getting a representative from NVE on the management team. Um, I guess I don't know the different different structure scenarios that you were talking about, but if there's a way to get one of them um, a seat at that table, then I'm in support of it. Okay, I'm hearing three councilmen in favor of uh, creating a collaboration, collaboration space on the incident management team. Is there any councilman that oppose that? Is there any others that would like to speak in favor of that? Yeah, Mr. Mayor, this is Melina. Councilman Meyer. Yeah, I would be um, very supportive of NVE um, working inside of the incident um, command structure. Uh, I would oppose, or I would um, also like to add maybe, um, or I would be in favor of not just having one seat be uh, NVE representative. I would like it to be inclusive um, throughout the structure. So however the um, command structure thinks that's appropriate, but um, I'm not opposed to one or more seats, however they want to work that out. Okay, and I think some of the later, the second and third question may help advise, um, but um, what I'm kind of thinking to help facilitate the conversation for City Council, what I'm thinking is that that might just take the form of directing uh, Helen and the incident team to uh, bring back to Council an, a brief explanation of what the different command structures are, and then uh, two or three options for having kind of an integrated tribal city team, what those might look like, a recommendation for which one they recommend, but two or three choices for council to work with. Does that sound good? Yeah. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, Tom Baylor. Uh, Councilman Baylor. Yeah, I support all that. In fact, I would recommend it. You know, this is going to be a long haul for us and, uh, People do get burnt out, and we're going to need people in duplicate positions. So I would definitely recommend that we join forces to beat this thing. Thank you. Okay, great. This is really helpful, uh, Council, because uh, we, we're not in a um, regular meeting. We're actually voting on things, but when we have a real strong consensus and direction to staff, it helps us prepare for the next meeting. So, um, Chairman Olson, I would like to pass it back to you because I... I, I want to make sure that we've answered that first question and uh, see if you have any other questions of your tribal council around that or, or any comments before we move on to the next one. Okay. Does any tribal council members have any questions? This is Raven. I don't have a question, more so a comment. Okay. What's your comment, Raven? I just want to thank um, City Council for um, wanting to collaborate and work together within the incident management or unified management group. And um, I really see us uh, working together and really collaborating in, in saving and the protection of our community. So thank you. Thank you, Raven. Are there any other Questions or comments from Tribal Council? This is Jack, uh, Daryl. I, I too, uh, appreciate uh, the philosophy of working together. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. Pam? Yeah, I, I ditto on all of that. I'm, I'm really glad that we're actually coming together because I know the city council needs our support and we need theirs, so great. That's all I get. Thank you, Pam. Tom? Yeah, I think it's a good idea. I think we should work together. It's got to be the way it's got to be. 
Okay, and as chairman, I just want to thank the city council for being receptive to this idea. It sounds like we definitely will go there. And I'll be honest, we as a tribal council, we already met a half hour before this meeting and we did bring up, you know, like if we do ask for a person, we did unanimously support appointing Bird Adams to that command. Okay, well, thank you, Daryl. That really helps us in our planning and facilitation. And for my part, uh, I, I would just echo that um, I think this is a, a, a great approach on behalf of the city council. We really appreciate uh, you and the tribe approaching the city and offering uh, to assist in this time. And uh, I'm glad to hear that the leadership ac across the um, tribal council and city council is, is uh, looking forward to working together on this. So uh, before we move on to the next one, I would just um, one more time uh, ask if there's anyone on city council that had a final comment on this item. Okay, hearing none. Uh, the second question was, um, would we like to have a unified front for the community? I'm sorry, you mentioned that you would like to have a unified front for the community. And that's what I wrote down. Um, I don't, I, I think I missed the question there. Uh, maybe it was more of a comment, uh, Chairman Olson. Was that a comment? The question was, um, we would like to meet more frequently with city council so that we can discuss anything and possibly have weekly meetings with city council. I know we're all overextended at this time, but we feel it's our number one priority is this, the virus and how to attack it and as a city our approach. So we would like to propose weekly meetings with the city council if the city council is receptive to it. I know we at the NVE, we have myself, Bert, and Brooke meet daily. And then we also have a standing order for the NVE Tribal Council to have a workshop every day at one o'clock to discuss anything. So we're, you know, we're kind of, like everybody else, we're totally engrossed in this. So is the city council receptive to us meeting weekly? Okay, thank you, uh, Chairman Olson. I understand the question better now. So um, I would uh, ask the city council to comment. Mayor Copeland, Captain uh, Sherman. Councilman Sherman. I would be in favor of this. I think Melina hit the nail on the head last week when she asked for a special meeting. So I would be excited to be working in conjunction with NBE. And I think it's the necessity um, requires that we meet more often. often. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor Coleman, Tom Baylor. Councilman Baylor. I would echo Kathy's uh, sentiments there and would uh, appreciate them offering and helping us out here. So I definitely would recommend it and support it. Thank you, Councilman Baylor. Mr. Mayor, this is Councilman Schaefer. Councilman Schaefer. Yeah, I'm also in support of in support of um, weekly meetings with NBE. It'd be great to have another entity to work with if they're willing to help. Okay, thank you, Councilman Schaefer. I've heard three councilmen in support of weekly joint meetings with the Native Village of EAC and uh, would ask, are there any uh, city councilmen opposed to that concept? And understand that doesn't mean that you don't like the idea. It may mean, well, I'll just leave it at that. I'm not hearing one, so would any other city councilman like to speak in favor? I've got one quick question, Mr. Mayor. This is Councilman Gard. Councilman Gard. Um, anyway, um, I don't know if it would work better we'd be able to do what we need to do, but we have kind of talked about a weekly standing meeting for ourselves, would it? work well if we could sit down and have a public workshop for that um, with the council, with the tribal council? Um, I think uh, I'll just make a couple of comments and uh, for food for thought, I guess. I think city council is still gonna wanna meet uh, independently 
especially if we have to go into executive session or talk with the attorney and so forth. And then um, the city council may want, you may want to have a weekly, a structured weekly time to meet as well. So, um, and we may also have some more thoughts about this after this meeting, because uh, this meeting, joint meeting will be followed by a city council meeting, but it sounds, oh, not today. Okay, is that moved till tomorrow? Uh, Saturday. Saturday. Okay, that's Saturday at noon. Okay, I uh, I just got caught up on our meeting schedule. So, um, does that help, Councilman Gard? Yeah. All I was trying to say was I don't know that being in regular session for us would best facilitate um, the flow of ideas and the stuff we want to do between the native village and ourselves, the workshop format may be a better format for doing that. in. Oh. we were getting together. Okay. For good a point. Council meeting afterwards, just like when we're working on the budget, if we set aside an hour or two hours or a half an hour, or whatever we think we need, um, to cover each body's concerns. If we did a workshop before then, we could then move on into our own. That's a good point of clarification, uh, Councilman Guard. I've been saying meeting, but um, I was envisioning uh, a weekly work session, a more informal setting. So let me just clarify. Uh, Councilman Olson, was that your intention, uh, or Chairman Olson, was that your intention to have this kind of a format where we can have a, a weekly workshop in a, a somewhat informal conversation between the two councils to um, kind of recap for the week and then bring address any new concerns or opportunities? Yes, that was our intent. The main intent was for us to communicate and if it's a workshop, that is fine with us. Okay, thank you. And then city council, um, I have the incident commander here that had a, a comment to add, uh, if you don't mind. Uh, go ahead, Paul. Hello, everybody. Uh, Mr. Olson, thank you for being here. Um, I don't know necessarily necessarily think it would be um, viable to have a council workshop with the NVE. Um, if we have a representative from NVE sitting in our uh, incident management team, I think that might um, be the best avenue instead of having these workshops where you, your representative would come back to the council. Um, I don't know how that works. We're, we're, I'd have to look back and talk this over with uh, the Deputy Incident Commander Mike Hicks and find out how exactly we could form this um, coalition, I guess, or, you know, because um, we all want to work together. And I absolutely agree that um, NVE should be part of, of this disaster that we're in. Um, so I think it would just step back and take a look and give some options. I think that would be the best bet. Okay, thank you. Yep. And having uh, become more familiar with the incident management process myself, what, what Paul is suggesting, I, th I think, is that we're trying not to overtask anybody, including you, the governance. Um, and uh, we already know that we need to provide, as incident team and staff, we need to pr be providing the city council uh, better information and more regularly and, uh, and we're turning that corner, but we also don't want to uh, have the city council feel like they have to have more meetings or additional meetings if we can ha be having the staff and, uh, you know, and incident teams working together on the tribe and city. So uh, those are just comments and suggestions to think about. And so we'll go back to uh, city council now. Were there any additional comments on having weekly um, joint workshops with the tribe. Mr. Mr. Mayor, Mayor I heard uh, I heard Councilman uh, Meyer first, but she already spoke. I'm sorry, who else? Mason was the other one. And Councilman. Okay, so you've both spoke once. Uh, Councilman Gleason. I don't think yeah, I was just going to say, um, this meeting that uh, Chairman uh, Daryl Holton is uh, talking about between NBE and, and city council. So I don't know that it has anything to do with the ICS. Now having Bert sit on the ICS is separate. Um, I would just say that on his we had, you know, Gilnet seat, Sane seat, we had native seat. So I don't see, I think it would be fairly easy to have 
have that done in ideas also. So that's just my opinion. And I am in favor of, of meeting. And if it needs to be some sort of a quick meeting, well, then Bert or Daryl could get a hold of Helen or you. And, you know, if it was some sort of an emergency, we could set something up. Otherwise, we could just schedule it for one particular day of the week. So I'm, I'm in favor of that meeting. And uh, that's all I've got. Okay, great. Thank you, uh, Councilman Glason. Uh, Councilman Meyer. Yeah, um, I thank you. I also agree um, with what Glason really just said. Uh, I think having a set weekly meeting with the two governing bodies is important. Um, I'm really happy that we all agreed on the first item, which was um, them having a representative or working into the command structure. So I think they'll be getting updates about what's happening on that end, but having the two governing bodies have a set time where they meet together, I think is a kind of a different layer and would be needed. It's really quick, it's really quick. Um, if it's not needed, uh, the chairman on NBE and you, Mr. Mayor, I think could make that, um, that call ahead of time if it's deemed unnecessary. But I think having that weekly uh, would be the easiest way. Well, thank you, uh, Councilman Meyer. And uh, as, as Council's facilitator, I'll just say that, um, you know, City Council, your seven elected representatives that are elected by different groups within the community. The tribe has five councilmen that are elected by different constituents in the tribe. So collectively, the 12 of you represent pretty much the entire community and you're the elected officials. So it's a two-way street as, as you get information, you're be able, able to basically disseminate it to the entire community. And when you bring concerns or suggestions to the table, you're bringing them from the entire community. So I, I think it's a good platform as well. Uh, so um, we'll have a city council meeting on Saturday, but as you suggested, Councilman Meyer, there's a lot of flexibility here. We can move meetings as we uh, need to or cancel them or restructure them. And I think um, staff and the incident management team can have some more information for you on this, even, even by this Saturday, uh, so that we keep the wheels turning here. Uh, are there additional uh, city council comments regarding weekly uh, tribal work and council workshops? Yeah, Mr. Mayor, Tom Baylor. Uh, Councilman Baylor. Okay, yeah, I'm definitely in support of meetings and, and maybe correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, council can drive policy and the more input we can get on what policies we need to move forward and issues we have to deal with, the better. And so having the tribe work with us, I think is an outstanding way to do that. So I firmly support it. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Baylor. And that's a good reminder. That's part of the incident uh, command structure is the city council, of course, are always the policy makers and that holds even during an emergency, so. Okay. Uh, Mayor, Councilman Sherman. Councilman Sherman. I just wanted to concur. I think it is a good idea for us to physically meet together. Well, not physically, whatever. To, <laughs> to do it weekly and I just, can't emphasize enough that I think it would be wonderful if we did it together. Thanks. Thank you very much. So uh, to meet cyber cyber face to face. Uh, further city council comments. Okay, thank you, um, Chairman Olson. Uh, I want to turn it back over to you for any tribal um, comments or questions or suggestions around this question. Okay, thank you, Mayor Copeland. Jack, do you have any questions or comments? Not right at the time. Okay, thank you, Jack. Raven, do you have any questions or comments on us meeting jointly? I just am in favor and really encourage um, us to work together during this time, and I thank you for um, thinking about it and being in favor for, for us meeting. Thank you, Raven. Pam? Yeah, I'm in favor of um, us meeting and as frequent as possible because this is a timely matter. Thank you. Thank you, Pam. Tom? Yeah, I think I'm, I'm in favor and I like the idea of flexibility and if we 
we need a meeting and we, we can do it uh, whenever, so rather than regular, so whatever it works. Okay. This is Chairman Olson, and I just want to extend it once again a thank you to City Council for being receptive to us meeting weekly, especially during this trying times. So well, we have no other questions or comments on the second question. Thank you, Chairman Olson. Daryl. Yes, Jack, thank you. Okay, I heard uh, Tribal Councilman Hopkins say that he's also in favor of this, so I just wanted to catch that for the record, and thank you. Thank you, Chairman Olson. I'm almost uh, afraid to move on here when we have 12 people all agree on two things in a row, you're kind of pressing your luck. But um, the last question might actually be a more fun one, um, and I will uh, pass that to City Council, and the question was what resources uh, does the city need? In other words, what assistance do you need? Um, I think in general, it, with the idea of can the tribe help provide that? So what what do we need from the tribe is the question. Mr. Mayor, this is Marina. Councilman Meyer. Um, at this time, I wouldn't really be able to answer this question because I don't, um, you know, we're still getting information and I think having the command structure be integrated with the city and NBE, I think those um, that that the answer to those that question will um, come out of that structure a little bit more because you know I'm not sure where the city's lacking right now or where they need some more help or um, how that goes. But when I think of resources, um, I don't think just of funding necessarily. I think of it as staff um, resources and even just working in the incident command structure and also the weekly meetings that we agreed that we'll have weekly there. So that's kind of what I think of as resources. Um, I think we got two of those um, kind of done out of the way now. And I think they'll have to kind of work together on that other level to see what other resources would be needed. Councilman Meyer, um, your incident commander, uh, Paul Trumbly, was going to come up and say what we needed, uh, what we would kind of need, but you just um, pretty much hit the nail on the head. So, um, of course, uh, Mayor, Tom Baylor. Councilman Baylor. Yeah, I guess um, I have a few suggestions, and of course, it's up to the incident command team, but I would like to see one of their doctors on our medical staff. Um, one thing and then maybe even to assist council um, and then you know I look at the, the structure and there's a lot of gaps and we have a lot of people that actually have jobs They're working for the city of Cordova and as I've said I expect this to be a long-term thing so their resources they have a lot of talented people in their their association and we perhaps we can figure out a way to start getting other people trained so they can either fill in the gaps or they can relieve some of our city staff so they can go about their regular duties because, uh, you know, those other jobs have to be done also. So they have their, the resource I'm looking for is, is their manpower and woman power, I should say. <laughs> and uh, if we can utilize some of that, uh, that would be helpful. But to start with, maybe having one of their doctors on our, on our medical staff and being able to advise us also would be helpful. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Baylor. Uh, other comments, City Council? And the question is, what resources um, might the city um, need from the tribe? In yeah, um, Mr. Mayor, this is Councilman Schaefer. Councilman Schaefer. Yeah, I kind of agree with what's already been said and that I feel like there are definitely gaps in that um, incident management chart that we were sent. And so if we could integrate some of their people into that chart, I think it would help alleviate some of the uh, workload for the people that are already working um, on the team. And then through that, we can kind of figure out what expertise they have that we don't have and what resources they have that we don't have that we could use. So I feel like it's kind of too 
soon to know what exactly we need. Okay, thank you, Councilman Schaefer. Um, Chairman uh, Wilson, this is Raven, may I speak? Is, is, that, is this an okay well, for me to say something? Raven, we're having City Council speak first and then we'll have MVE speak later. Uh, Chairman Olson, uh, go ahead, uh, just in case um, it's something pertinent to the uh, thought thread here. Okay, Raven, go ahead. So I just wanted to um, let City Council know that Alonka um, has received rapid test machines and test kits, um, and they can be initiated on Monday. We have 46 tests, and that... Um, that we have a letter going to ANTHC for more test kits and to, um, that can help with the commercial fishing and population increase. I also wanted to um, ask because we do, we can provide medical staff and um, Alonka is ready and uh, willing to help that. Uh, we were wondering if we could get the uh, incident command structure paperwork, the 209s, and then, um, which is the command meeting summary, so that we can kind of prepare ourselves um, ahead of time before we kind of decide who would be best fitting. Yes, Raven, that's a good point, and I, I think what our plan is for tribal council to meet with FERC and find out the availability of our staff and where we could possibly fit in. We'll have that discussion later. Mr. Mayor, Dave, please. Um, okay, just a second. Uh, is are, are, are you done, Chairman Olson? Yes. Okay, we'll take it back to City Council for a minute, but before I go to Councilman Glazen, I just want to mention that I know that you've already met and kind of designated Bert as your representative to uh, work on uh, some form of unified command and whatnot. My recommendation would be to have him work with Helen and Paul to uh, look at that structure and stuff before we uh, try to get too uh, far out in front of the, the cart, but um, that, that would just be my suggestion. And now I'll turn to uh, Councilman Glazen. Yeah, you got it there. I don't need to talk. Okay. <laughs> I'll, if, I, if I knew what you were thinking, I would just let you say it. <laughs> uh, is there other uh, city council comments around um, uh, resources that the uh, city might need from the tribe? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Councilman Baylor, you've spoke once. I wasn't sure who the second voice was. Kathy Sherman. Councilman Sherman, and then Baylor. I just wanted to um, suggest that possibly uh, the Tribal Council and, and Mr. Stedman could start to receive the minutes, just as the City Council is receiving the minutes from the IMT meetings. Um, that might be useful to them. It's been very useful to me. Um, so that's all. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councilman Baylor. Yes, I, uh, I don't want the innocent commander to think we're overrunning his operation here, but I just feel since this is going to be a long-term thing that redundancy in all these positions is very, very important. Um, if somebody happens to fall ill or can't make it or gets burned out, we, we really need that redundancy, and that's where I was getting at is utilizing uh, some of these skilled folks that we have. So thanks. Okay, thank you, Councilman Baylor. And we have, did you wanna make a comment, Paul? Yeah, just we have the incident commander would like to uh, comment here for council. Uh, Mr. Baylor, no, not at all. Um, I think, you know, the city of Cordova and NVE, we really do have to put our resources together and and work on this as a team. Um, so no, you're, you're absolutely not stepping on any toes. Um, again, Deputy Incident Commander Mike Hicks and I will talk about the structure and where we can fit in um, NVE into our structure, and we'll just move from there. We're, we really want to work with everybody 
So yeah, no, not at all. Don't think of that. Uh, City Council, further uh, comments or questions around um, resource sharing? And then there's another yeah. site. Uh, sorry. Go ahead. Mr. Mayor, this is Councilman Guard. Councilman Guard. Yeah. Um, what might be as helpful as anything right off the bat is it seems like needs, wants, and desires are a very fluid thing the more we learn and the more things change with this. So if maybe we had a better idea of what everybody might have available to them, you know, what their tool bag might look like, that might help us more in facilitation further down the road when we can better ascertain what our needs are at the moment. Instead of just focusing on what particular items we might need now. Thank you, Councilman Guard. That's exactly where I was just starting to comment that the question works both ways and that there are maybe resources that the tribe needs that the city can offer. And uh, if we have a, a, a joint um, effort between the staff and, and on the and a kind of an integrated uh, incident management team, then they can be directly sharing those needs and resources. And that makes it that much easier for us to develop a list of things that neither has that we can push up to the state or federal government for the resources we need. So, and, and, and also decide which organization might be more uh, likely to get them or, or at least get two separate requests in and two different paths to the resources we need. So um, further city council uh, comments around uh, resource sharing. Okay, hearing none. Um, Mr. Mayor, this is Councilman Schaefer. Uh, Councilman Schaefer. Um, in terms of resources, yeah, they mentioned that they are getting a rapid testing machine, and I think it comes with 46 or so tests right off the bat. But um, Raven mentioned that they've requested more tests, and I was just wondering if they requested a specific number or just generally more, how many they expected that they might be able to get? Carry your birth. I can yeah, I can speak to that. Bert. Um, we don't have, oh, sorry, go ahead, Bert. Go ahead, Carrie, you're on. Okay, um, I was just gonna say, no, we did not request a specific number. Um, we, so what we've kind of learned over the last couple of days is that the tests are being very tightly released. If that's, a, that's not maybe the right way to describe that, but there's a very limited number that are being released across the entire country. Um, so we have asked ANTHC in light of the fact that we are about to have a large influx of people, if perhaps they could assist us in getting some more, either through IHS or the federal government. So um, as we learn more, we'll certainly let you guys know. And, and I, can add, I can add to that a bit. Um, ANTHC was issued X amount of test kits, and they had sent out test kits to about 22 tribes or consortium, and they held back X amount of test kits, so they didn't hand out all of what they received. And what they're doing is they're holding remaining test kits for the communities that would need them, and one of the criteria that they have is commercial fishing populations. So they're waiting to see what, what that is and what communities those are, and so our letter going to them right now is letting them know about our commercial fishing population increase and our need for test kits. I'm assuming that as we get close to um, using the 48 test kits that, that we let them know we need more, but I think they're gonna wait to see which tribes or communities um, start using that 40 up, 48 up and then distribute it by that. Thank you, Bert. Councilman Schaefer, does that, did that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Okay, thank you. And that's a great, this is the great thing about resource sharing. If the state gets an allocation and offers a testing unit and testing kits, if we already have a testing unit here, we may say, you know, 
send that testing unit to another community that needs it and send us more of the kits. And so that's the great thing about uh, pooling resources so we know what we need and, and what we would like. Um, other council comments around resource sharing before I turn it back over to Chairman Olson. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, this is Melina. Councilman Meyer. Um, just for kind of on the question of um, testing kits and the machine that MBE is receiving, um, I had a question about the machine, whether it was um, limited in performing X amount of tests or if it's unlimited, because maybe we could, that could be another area where we do the resource sharing. Maybe the city can um, go to other avenues to try to purchase more kits that could be used on that machine. So I guess your question was, is there a limitation on that um, that machine of how many tests it can run? Chairman Olson? Oh, I was going to ask Gary to address that. Um, you know, I don't, I, I'm not sure if I understand your question, so let me just ask you to clarify. Do you mean, is there a limit on the number of tests that the machine can run in, say, a 24-hour period? Or do you mean, is there a limitation on the number of kinds of tests, in, meaning can it run some tests from some other company or that are testing something different? Yeah, I guess I was just asking um, kind of its capabilities, because um, sounds like NBE is receiving 40-something um, tests. So if we were somehow able to, or if the opportunity came to purchase more tests, um, does that machine have any limitations in handling that? I think I kind of understand that we can buy more tests now and run them, not necessarily in a set amount of time, but in that machine's lifetime. Oh, I, you know, I can't really answer that exactly, but like any other medical testing machine, you know, we have several that do very similar things. They work for several years. You can do tens of thousands of tests on them. Okay. That was my kind of question. I guess I should have asked it like other machines out there that you guys have. Oh. <laughs> so that, that answers it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Councilman Meyer. Where? Uh, Councilman Allison. Uh, Allison. Yes, Councilman Allison. Yeah, I just had a follow-up to that, just to, if, if Carrie can confirm. So that thing can do uh, basically four per hour, right? It, it, we can't do a thousand in a day. We'd still be limited to whatever a ten-hour day would be forty or, or so. Is that correct? Um, yes, it takes about fifteen minutes to run each test. Um, so yes, you can run a ton of them in a day. Uh, we do still have to follow the CDC guidelines, which were changed uh, just a couple of days ago. So now they're recommending, the CDC is still recommending, um, they've changed it so now they're recommending more widespread and early testing as opposed to like last week, they wanted everybody to be sick before they tested them. But they are saying that with this new machine, um, because the testing supplies are so limited that um, they use these tests now for people who are sick and people who are mildly ill um, now use the tests that we have been using up, this, up till now and use the commercial labs. So there's still a supply issue. But I guess that's a short issue, the short answer. Councilman Allison, does that answer your question? Yeah, I was just more at the, you know. Uh, yeah. I know the machine, it, the machine isn't the new machine. The machine was was developed to, to do strep tests, I think. But but uh, the, the fact that it can only do four per hour, we couldn't do, you know, like we can't run 50 people in a two hour period, you know, if a cannery group came in, we'd, you know, we'd have to I see. spread them out. Mm -hmm. Right, yes, that's correct. Okay, thank you. Uh, City Council, other comments or questions around resource sharing? Okay, I'll turn it back to you, uh, Chairman Olson. Thank you, Mayor Copeland. 
Jack, do you have any questions or comments on resource sharing? I just like to say we're willing to share whatever we have. Thank you, Jack. Raven? Um, yeah, I think that once we get uh, our unified group of who we can get onto the, uh, what is it, unified management team, is incident manage management team, I think that we could better understand what we can each provide for each other and then how um, together maybe we can do more uh, by trying to get things together. Thank you, Raven. Pam? Yeah, I'm in full agreement with both Jack and Raven. Um, yeah, I'm also very open to what the city can resource for us, too, in this whole deal. Thank you. Thank you, Pam. Tom? Yeah, I think resource sharing is a good idea. We're all in this thing together. Thank you, Tom. And I reiterate what, what all council members have said, and I look forward to working with the city on any and all resources each of us have. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Olson. I would just say on behalf of the city council, I can't tell you how excited and appreciative we are that you were able to get a testing kit. Uh, everything I've heard from our medical team and any of the literature and news I've seen is it's a single best uh, tool in uh, detecting and, and fighting this uh, outbreak uh, or potential outbreak. So um, we really appreciate that uh, the tribe was able to get one and to make it available to the community where it's needed. So um, thank you very much. Mayor, uh, Tom Baylor. Councilman Baylor. If I could, a little bit off subject, but I, I've got my internet going here, and I don't know if anybody's seen this yet, but President Trump approved Alaska disaster declaration, and it says this means federal funds will be available for, to state, tribal, and eligible local governments and certain private nonprofits organizations for emergency protective measures. So <clears throat> there's some good news. That's great news, uh, Councilman Baylor. And uh, that's a good way to, uh, your comments, a great way to kind of segue into an open, more open format. I think the three major questions that the tribe had for the city council have been addressed now. And so what we can do is just open it up for a facilitated discussion between, open discussion between the tribe and the city council and the tribal council. And uh, I would just ask if you're on the city council, direct a question through me. And if you're on a tribal council, uh, direct it through uh, Chairman Darrell. And uh, the floor is yours. Mr. Mayor, this is Melina. Uh, Councilman Meyer. Um, yeah, I don't really have anything more to ask. I think these were three great questions asked by uh, NVE to the council here, and I think that we're all in good agreement. I think that is a good first step, and um, I'd like it to continue. Um, my comment is just that um, because we are two different governing bodies, um, we may be governing a lot of you know, the same, we do govern the same people in a lot of ways. There's a lot of overlap, at least for the MBE side, as uh, Cordova citizens and whatnot. So um, I would just like to encourage and maybe just put out there that um, if we do ever run into a disagreement, uh, we should uh, really respect these each other as a disagreement as two different governing bodies. And we, we may disagree on something. I think right now it's a uh, Disaster, but if something ever comes up in the future um, with this disaster and these weekly meetings, that we still continue to meet and respect that we have different opinions, but we still keep the lines of communications open and keep these weekly meetings set in stone and that we don't get away from that. Thank you for that comment, Councilman Meyer. And I think it's it's actually great that we have a tribal council and the city council that each have odd uh, numbers and can come to a consensus separately. So if there's anything that they want to uh, 
test the agreement between the two organizations, we have a, a pretty good way of doing that while still uh, maintaining individual identity. But uh, for a crisis like this, it's a way for the two organizations to come together as a council of 12, and it kind of feels like that's what's happening. And uh, I think it makes a lot easier for the staff and organization, uh, staff and resources for both organizations to be directed from the top by the leadership. So um, this feels like a really good meeting. Chairman Olson, this is Raven, may I speak? Yes, Raven. Um, I just wanted to maybe throw out there, um, maybe inviting that both of our legals work together so that, um, you know, the tribe can do things that the city can't do and that the city can do things that the tribe can't do. I think it would be great if our legals got introduced and worked together um, to just kind of be more on a unified path. Thank you, Raven. Cheryl, this is Bert. Can I add to that? Yes. So part of the uh, thought behind both legals working together are some questions that I'm sure you guys are getting, um, I'm getting, the tribal council are getting, and it would be good to have a discussion between both legals when, so we can answer to our tribal members and our community members. Um, this, I think the main question that we keep getting is, between both governments on interstate travel and traveling into our community. And the mandate that the governor put forth um, on small community status and the restrictions uh, that may go beyond that if you, if you do fit the, the small community status. So we get mixed mixed in terms of identifying or getting through that. So it would be good in terms of what the city can do, in terms of what the, the tribe can do. So that's just one example of why we need to continue meeting um, weekly and, um, and then have our legal have discussions. So when we do meet, we're having, we're not wasting time on a discussion uh, in that we can get right to what we can and cannot do. Um, I also want to add that um, that on top of the, the testing kits, you know, we are in constant communication or teleconferences, our consultation with IHS in, t in terms of the CARES Act. And the tribe and tribes throughout the country are going to get uh, some funding. It's going to be a base funding um, from the government from each tribe for health care supplies or what we deem. And that's really what's holding up uh, the release of the funds is, is the consultation between the tribes and the government on the freedom to say what they want to spend the funds on and how the formula is going, formula is going to be used to distribute to each tribe. So the government has told the, told the IHS and HHS and the Department of Treasury that they need to have those funds in the tribe's hands by April 27th, I believe. Um, so just so the community knows is that that's another resource that the tribe is working on that brings more funds to the community, um, as well as HRSA. HRSA already announced the distribution to tribes. We have resources available to us, and uh, being able to use the city and the CCMC and Ilanka, um, I think uh, working together is the way this should work in attacking this virus. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, this is Alex. Councilman Ellison. Yeah, I, I got. Uh, I have no problem with our attorneys meeting together through the through the management. You know, through Helen and Bert. I think they need to be involved with that. I don't want to just turn the attorneys loose and spend whatever money they want to spend, but uh, certainly they should be working together on um, the different things that we can and can't do and, and um, 
and let's utilize, you know, the if you can do it better than we can, then great. And if we can do it better than you can, then perfect on that too. I, I, I'm pretty sure the communities have a allocation from that care that coming as well. So, um, but yeah, get the attorneys together through the management and and figure out what we can do. That's a great point, Councilman Allison. Um, I'm going to summarize what I've captured so far from the request from both councils at the end to make sure we didn't miss anything. But uh, Helen was shaking her head, no, we don't get a municipal allocation from the CARES Act. It goes through the state. Mm. I'll let uh, Helen just interject here because she had some information for you. I think one of the great things about being a tribal government is you're viewed as a sovereign government and you can work direct negotiations, um, get direct allocations from the federal government. Unfortunately, the city, um, through the CARES Act, um, because our population isn't 500,000, which means no one in Alaska, all funds that are distributed through the CARES Act to municipalities or local governments have to go through the state. So um, basically, we're going to have to wait for the state to receive the funds and make a determination on how they're going to allocate. And at this point in time, because the governor vetoed portions of the budget, which affect our local school budgets and things, the assumption is being made that his distribution of the CARES Act funding to cities and municipalities will be coming as a reintroduction of the funds that he vetoed directly from the school bond debt reimbursement and the... Um, community, uh, I'm brain dead here, but the community allocation that we we're all going to get. So um, just to be clear about that, that's that's likely what's going to happen, and we won't get a direct allocation. So um, the other good point there, Councilman Allison, that you made is that um, the use of the attorney should be managed by the city manager uh, so, that, um, so that she has controls over the budget and... Uh, hours and so forth and and also visibility into what the work products and stuff are the attorney and make sure they're meeting the council's uh objectives mr mayor uh, dave glason councilman glason any question for helen uh did we receive any kind of response from the attorney general yet on that uh, small community emergency travel order not yet, um, but we are working um, directly, trying to get that response. We've got our lobbyist working on it today, um, and we've reached out um, through various sources, including our our um, uh, legislator, um, our <laughs> representative and senator, to see if we can't get them to shake something loose. Um, so, no, the answer is no. Okay, thanks, Helen. I, I kind of figured. I, I doubt that we're ever going to hear from them. Um, so that's what I suspected. We, we will hear from them. Um, in fact, if any of you heard the governor's address night before last, he specifically said that he needed to address and was going to address the travel, what he called unconstitutional travel restrictions that some communities were putting in play. Um, and um, that he was specifically talking to Cordova. So I'm, I'm assuming he's referencing the letter that we submitted last weekend. Oh, Roger, yeah. Okay, yeah, I missed that little snippet. Um, okay, well, thank you. Um, okay, thank you, Councilman Glason. Uh, Mr. Mayor, this is Councilman Schaefer. Uh, Councilman Schaefer. Yeah, I had another question for Helen. Um, we've got any more updates on those antibody tests that we had discussed last week? Because, I mean, if that w could potentially be a resource down the line that we have um, to contribute with NDE. There's been a h huge amount of press since we initially discussed it about the validity of, validity of a number of tests, and there's been a number of scams, um, um, people getting tests that... Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, so um, at this point, um, it's not a recommended direction. I mean, no one's coming out and really advocating for it. Um, so to answer your question, we did a bit more research and, and we're really unclear about um, uh, how productive that would be for us. Okay, great, thank you. 
Uh, Councilman Schaefer, I would just add that uh, the state did order a lot of A-type and we have access to um, some ways of vetting to see if the ones they got are good and we could potentially request some from them. So that would be an option I just mentioned. I would just remember, I would just okay, remind- yeah, I think we should, if we have the option to request them from the state, I mean, and we trust them, I guess, um, I think we should definitely do that. Okay, thank you. And I just want to remind that the floor is open to both councils and just direct your questions or comments to your chair. I was just going to ask if any NBE tribe council members have any questions or comments. <clears throat> okay, thank you, Mayor Chair. Dan? Mayor Copeland? Thank you, uh, Chairman Olson. And I think at this time, what I'd like to do is um, go ahead and go through these three directions I heard from the, the uh, two councils to your staffs and make sure that we captured those and didn't overlook any others and then have any final comments. Thank the, you. Thank you. So the first one I heard was to uh, the city council uh, directing the city incident command to look at ways of integrating uh, the native village of EAC into the command structure uh, via unified command or other options and to bring that to the city council. Uh, the second thing I heard uh, from uh, Councilman Sherman was that the um, incident management team minutes that are going to city council also be shared with uh, Bert Adams, if I recall, is that correct, Councilman Adams, or Councilman Sherman? Yes, I think I called him Senator Stedman's name instead, though. Oh, okay. Uh, so, so we can look at that and see about uh, legalities and so forth of, of sharing those minutes outside the organization. There are certain liabilities and things that we have to be careful for of. So if it seems like we may be dragging our feet for a day or two or something, we just want to make sure that we aren't sharing something that could pose liability to the city and and inadvertently uh, risk the whole community. So it's not that we're not being transparent. We just want to make sure that your staffs are doing their job and making sure that we overall uh, protect the community and uh, health first, but also against liabilities. Um, and then the third item from uh, Tribal Councilman uh, Raven was to uh, ask to see if our two legal teams could work together. And I think I heard uh, a, uh, somewhat of a directive from the City Council to uh, their staff to uh, look into that. And then I'd also remind the City Council we have a City Council meeting on Saturday uh, where there will be another chance for any clarifications and probably to get some feedback on some of these items. So I would ask uh, from both councils if I uh, missed anything, if those were the three that we were trying to capture. And then open it up for any final comments before adjournment from either council through your chair. Hey, Mr. Mayor, Allison. Councilman Allison. Yeah, I just wanted to thank the NBA folks. They got a chance to thank us earlier in the meeting, but I, uh, goes to, uh, right back at you. We, we thank you guys for being willing to work with us and and uh, it's nice to be able to work together. You know, we're all the same same community so uh, good to work together. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Ellison. And I would also ask for specific feedback on this structure. Uh, Chairman Olson and I got together and we tried to set up a structure that facilitated good conversations, but but kept order, especially with this electronic uh, platform. But would open it up to uh, other final comments. Works good for me. And this is Mr. Mayor, this is Councilman Schaefer. Councilman Schaefer. Um, I thought the format was good. It was organized. It would be nice if we could switch to. I don't know what everyone's internet or phone capabilities are, but like if we could do a mix of video call or people call in if they don't have that as an option. I think that helps 
flow of conversation and facilitate conversation a little better when you can see people. And I suggest the same thing for our council meetings. Okay, thank you, Councilman Schaefer. Mr. Mayor, Council Councilman Gleason. Councilman Gleason. Yeah, so I think, Ann, are you referring to, like, Zoom or something like that? And uh, so I'll finish my comment. I just want to thank, thank NV for making time for this meeting. And um, thank our staff for uh, their hard work. This is a challenge when everybody's on the phone. It's way different than meeting in person, and it takes some getting used to. I also like to thank ITS. Paul's got a heavy hat on there and uh, appreciate the work that he's doing and Mike and everybody that's involved there, Heather. So, uh, and Susie, I think she's at the meeting today also. So uh, that's all I got, but I, I, I have Zoom on my phone, if that's what uh, uh, Ann was referring to. Yeah, this is Councilman Schaefer. I mean, there's Zoom, there's GoToMeeting, there's Skype options, Skype for Business. There are a lot of different options out there. So might be worth looking into. Okay, thank you, Councilman uh, Gleason. And one of the challenges, of course, is making the meetings available publicly without having the public overwhelm whatever platform we're using. So that's one of the things we wrestle with, but we'll certainly continue to uh, look at options. Mr. Mayor, Tom Baylor. Councilman Baylor. Yeah, I'd echo all the comments that were made, really. Appreciate you guys coming to help us out here, to help the community out. Uh, as a suggestion uh, for mayor, I think if we did the roll call like Daryl was doing, I think that would help our meetings run a little smoother. Uh, as far as roll call, I mean calling on people to comment. And then the other comment I have is I don't know how we're going to do this because they run an awful polite meeting and we're a little bit more brash. So this is going to be an interesting mix. <laughs> so thank you all. Councilman Baylor, that is a really uh, great suggestion, and I have just marked off counts you, Councilman Schaefer, Councilman Glason, who have made your comments, and I'm just going to continue through the list here, and then I can hand it over to uh, Daryl for tribal comments. So for City Council comments, uh, Councilman Sherman. Sure. Um, I was going to echo everybody's um, thoughts already. This is something that was actually needed to happen long before a pandemic. I'm sorry that that's what caused this um, to give us some headway. I just wanted to say how excited I am about the possibilities of working together, and I think it will really be a breath of fresh air to our community to hear this as well. And then I just wanted to say it's really nice to hear all your voices because I haven't heard um, or seen a lot of you in many months. So it's very nice to hear your voices. Thank you, Councilman Sherman. And uh, Councilman Baylor, I also wanted to comment that um, uh, City Clerk had actually given me a whole uh, whole page full of um, roll call orders with the orders changed so that Council can uh, speak in different orders. So um, I just wasn't using it yet. So thank you both. Uh, Councilman Gard. Uh, I'd like to thank NBE for sitting down with us. Um, the more unified we can make all of our efforts, the less patchwork system of coverage we're going to have for the community of Cordova and the be better results we're going to have in the end. So this is better for all of us, and I thank everybody for participating in it. That's all. Thank you, Councilman Gard. Uh, Vice Mayor Meyer. Yeah, I'd like to echo all the comments before me. Um, I think this is a great first meeting, and I look forward to the other ones to come. Thank you. And a final word from City Council from Councilman Ellison. Oh, I don't need a second turn. Thanks. Thank you, Councilman Ellison. Uh, Chairman Olson. Thank you, Mayor Copeland. I will go to the list, and the first one is Jack Hopkins. Do you have any questions or comments? I just want to say thank you to the council 
for allowing us to meet with them, that we respect them, and that we know that, uh, that they're doing the best job for our community. And uh, two thumbs up. Thank you, Council Member Hopkins. Tom Raven, do you have any questions or comments? Yeah, I, you know, everybody said it so well, and I'm just so thankful that we're all here to support each other and realize that the only way we can come out of this tragedy is um, standing strong together and that, you know, we have to navigate through this pandemic and understand that we have to make adjustments and we have to make changes. And, and I'm really excited to see us work together and, and stand unified for the community. So thank you. Thank you, Council Member Cunningham. Council Member Pam Smith. Yeah, I've been listening to the city council meetings for a while now, and um, it's no doubt that you guys are working very hard. And um, as a citizen of Cordova and also a tribal council person, um, I just want to say that um, I support you, and this is great that we're coming together to do the best for this community. Thank you. Thank you, Pam. Tom, do you have any questions or comments? No, just a comment. I just, I just want to say I know we're all in this together, and it was a, it a great first meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. And as chairman, I just want, once again, I just want to thank everybody. I think this was great communication. And I got a little thrown off in the last five minutes because I have four pages and the checkoff list got out of track, so I was a little off track. But once again, thank you guys. We really appreciate it. And uh, I'd like to op I, I always like to close the meeting with, um, does staff have any questions or comments? Cheryl, this is Bert. Yes, Bert. Yeah, I, I would like to thank uh, the City Council, the NBE Council, um, the City staff and the NBE staff. I know working with our staff, they've done a marvelous job in the last couple of weeks and, and putting together plans and putting together how we, are, we NBE, within our structure, are going to move forward and based on what I've seen on the city side your staff has done the same so I really like to uh, thank both staff on both sides for the work they are doing thank you thank you Bert is there any other NVE staff who would like to make any comments Hearing none, I think we are, we're, we've made all our comments, and once again, thank you, City Council. Okay, thank you, Councilman Olson, uh, Chairman Olson, and I guess I would just do the same. Is there any city staff that would like to comment? Hi, this is Helen, and I want to say that I've enjoyed working with Bert um, since I began work here as city manager in October, um, and look forward to working with everyone. I know that um, NVE staff is already a critical part of the incident management team. The hospital from the Ilanka hospital personnel from the Ilanka clinic are very involved, and we've really appreciated the work that they've put into making sure that we have a robust response on the health side, and we look forward to working with all of you in making sure that we're keeping our community safe and allowing um, our community to prosper. Thank you. And by city staff, I'm including Dr. Blackadar, if you wanna make any comments on behalf of the medical community, or uh, Heather is uh, the liaison uh, between the incident management team and the uh, community and, and city. Clay, I, I think um, uh, Carrie Collins and Hannah and the CCMC staff are, 
already working um, pretty well together. So uh, I'm just more of a help for the town, but I talk to Hannah on a regular basis. Thank you, Dr. Blackadar. We appreciate that. You're going to set something up for next week? So uh, we can, I think we can have Bert and Helen work together on, and uh, with their, with me and with Daryl to uh, schedule a time that works. And um, so I'm uh, ready to adjourn and I will just uh, pause for a couple of seconds to see if there's any objection for a final comment from either council. Okay, hearing none, uh, we are adjourned. Thank you.